Today we are going to learn how to create affordable cluster and avoid being bankrupt. We are going to do that in three steps. In the first one we will learn the basic knowledge about the clusters. In the second we will see how to calculate the cost of the cluster. And in the third one we will combine that knowledge and create as cheap cluster as possible. And this is of course part of the Databricks basic playlist on our channel. So feel free to check other episodes which we are adding every week. Cluster is one or more virtual machines which we need to execute our code, our analytics or our workflows. The primary place to create it is on the left on the top where we have compute. Once we click it, we are going to see the list of the clusters. Right now there is nothing because we haven't created yet one. Before we do that, we need to understand that there are different types of the clusters which we can see on the top. We are in the tab called all-purpose compute where we can create a clusters to run our analytics or workflows. Then we have job computes where we, we are going to see a clusters which are then dedicated to run our workflows as a data engineer primarily. We have also a tab SQL warehouse. This is a special type of the clusters dedicated for run Databricks SQL warehouses, which we'll be talking about later on in the series. And then we have a pools, which is a set of the workers which can accelerate creation of the cluster. And what is super important, we have policies and policies define what type of the cluster we can create. Those are default policies like a personal compute, which will be frequently assigned in the corporates to the regular user that he can create basic cluster by itself you don't need to go there i just go there so video looks smarter but if i go back i can also see the policy like a power user which will allow a user to create broader set of the clusters more powerful in this case so let's go back to the compute and let's create some cluster we can do that on the right or in the middle where we have create compute and then we see a set of different options which at the beginning looks a bit scary so first things first we need to give a name to the clusters the same way we are naming our kids the same name we are naming our pets we need to name our cluster like a presentation cluster and the reason being is that at the beginning you may have only one cluster but with time in the reality you are going to have multiple different clusters with different libraries and with different compute powers and it's easy to get lost then on the right side you are going to see a summary of the cluster we are going to create like a type of the workers drivers and what is also very important the cost of the cluster which we will be translating into the dollars later on so when it's going about the options, the first one is something that we are familiar with already. This is the policy. Depends on the policy we are going to choose. We will have a different options available. Check it out. If I choose personal compute, the number of the options are changing. And the same if I go with the power user compute, which by default is for the workspace administrator, the number of the options will change as well. And also as I'm the creator of the workspace, as I'm administrator, I have option to use unrestricted, meaning no policy and I can do whatever I want. The the next one is information if you want to create a multi-node cluster with multiple virtual machines with workers and drivers or a single node where a driver and worker will be on the same machine. We will be talking about the Spark and Databricks architecture later on, but the basic information is that there is always a driver and always a worker. Right now I want to go with multiple node just to show you number of options. We can choose access mode. Are we creating this cluster only for one user or this cluster is going to be shared across multiple users? Moving forward, we can choose what type of the software will be inserted on that cluster. All of those options are fairly similar with the exception that ML stands for machine learning and then we would create a cluster with some libraries installed by default. We can also install them manually later on. It doesn't matter at this stage. What's matter is if we want to use a photon acceleration and this is a big thing in the Databricks. This accelerates significantly your workflows. It also accelerates significantly the consumption of your money. Check it out. This is right now the cost of the cluster if I uncheck use photon accelerator, it goes down by two. So in our case, when we are learning Databricks, this is something what we don't want to use. This will be useful when we'll be running a heavy workflow. So I uncheck it. And then the interesting things, the information about what type of the workers we want and what type of the drivers. And again, here in this setup, each worker will be on the separate virtual machine. And that's the parameter of that virtual machine, which we are creating. And the number of them, the number of the workers, which can go from anything to one to whatever is your in my case azure limits and this is a cost it automatically went up because i have pretty powerful worker and pretty significant number of them. i can also use a spot instances spot instances means that i will use the azure resources which are unused by azure at this stage but on and it will be cheaper but on the other hand azure can take it back at any moment of time right now it's not needed for me moving forward this option is important this option allows databricks to auto scale so depends 
on your workload, you will have either one worker or more. If you will be running only light analytics basics code, in this setup you would have one virtual machine as the worker and if you would be running something heavy, you would get up to 10 of them. If I turn it off, you, I see that I have only fixed number here. If I turn it on, again, I can choose the number of the workers. And another important option, it's terminate. After saying that if I will not use my cluster for, let's say, 30 minutes, it will be automatically terminated. And this is something what I want because then I will not pay for it. And some more advanced options, which are not important at this stage. And just to show you the difference between the different policies, which are super important, if I go with the personal compute, I automatically get single node clusters so again work and driver on the same virtual machine and just couple couple of types of them which i can choose in this case free i can switch change the termination time to whatever i want and, and very much that's it nothing more and the same if i go with the power user compute this is where i can spin off more powerful multi-node clusters and again more expensive so what i'm going to do i will go back to the personal compute and just make sure that the termination after is something reasonable, like 30 minutes. The cost went down to 0.75. Later on, we'll be talking about how to get the minimum cost of the cluster. But right now I can hit create compute. And after a couple of minutes, cluster will be created. What you can recognize by this wonderful green side over here. Starting from now on, you can create a notebook and attach it to your cluster. What we can going to do very, very quickly, workspace, add notebook. And on the right side, if it hasn't been attached to your cluster automatically, you can click it and choose your cluster from the list. Once you go back to the cluster list and click a cluster detail, you will see in the tabs notebooks that there is one notebook using your cluster and you can go also check that notebook. If you realize that you made some mistake, create the cluster, maybe you need something else, something more powerful, or you want to simply change a name of it, you can always at any moment of time go back to your cluster list, click your cluster, and then you have option to edit. You can change multiple options just you need to remember now whenever you will change anything you will need to restart the whole cluster as we saw there is a lot of those dbus per hour which are not really intuitive at the beginning Fortunately, there is really easy way to translate that into money. And here comes a very important page which will allow you to translate those DBUs per hour, which we have seen a second ago, into dollars. I will link it under the video. Once you will scroll it down, you will have a table with the price. And this is the price, depends on the type of the cluster you have created and depends on the tier you are using. I'm using the premium tier and I was creating all purpose compute. So that's my cost per DBU per hour, 55 cents. If I were using a job compute as a data engineer well the cost of the cluster would be way lower as it's presented over here and the same goes for the sql compute which is different type of the cluster there is also different cost and once you will change a region the cost of some of those clusters can also change like if i'm changing here i see that cost of those clusters also has been changed so cost also depends on the region and now we have a basic knowledge about clusters we understand different parameters and we also know how to calculate the cost of the cluster it's a time to create as cheap cluster as it's possible. Let me show you how to create one relatively cheap cluster, which I believe that you already know how. First things first, we want to make sure that the policy is unrestricted, then go and switch to single node, so the cost will go down already. Of course, unchecked Python acceleration and cost goes down to 0.75, and we can actually make it even smaller by looking for the node type, which is having 8 gigabytes of memory, which is over here. It's called standard F. Four, and then the cost is 0.5 dbus per hour and that's the smallest cost which we can get we should also change a termination tab type and of course change the name of the cluster to chip cluster and then again hit create compute and once you finish your work don't forget to go to the cluster and terminate it not to pay for it anymore you don't need to wait for the termination time to be over as you could see, if you stick to a couple of rules, it's actually pretty simple. In next episode, we will dive into Databricks Notebooks, which is next thing to learn. Cheers!